Hello and welcome back to OmniFit TV. This is your host, Omar Speaking, and tonight I'm just going to go for a double upload. This video is going to be a little lighter than the last one, and it is just my thoughts <clears throat> on the Saudi Public Investment Fund and the Saudi Premier League, or the Saudi Pro League, as it is called. Now, this particular league, upon coming in contact or just being exposed to it for the first time two or so, two or so years ago on a very broad level, as in, I have to cover their games and pay attention to a lot of what they were doing. I was quite surprised with the level of competition present. I considered it the best Arab league and the best league in both Asia and Africa by a mile, based on my own experience with both Asian and African football. In which case, I ended up having a lot more respect for the Asian game, especially the Asian Champions League and Confederations Cup competitions. Why do you ask? Because truly, the level of competition that is present in Asia is the kind that amasses a great following. And the football they play isn't half bad at all, actually. The Saudi derbies that are con contested in Asian football, in Asia in general, in and of itself, beyond the league, actually pulls in a very high number of viewers. And the football they play is very good by their standards. Now, the reason I'm talking about all this is to say that I think that the people behind the scenes in Saudi Arabia who are trying to further promote the league are trying to bring in these big names for a long-term effect, which is a little obvious. Now, I think that you could easily say that they're taking this from the playbook of the MLS because the MLS is the league that has tried to do that for a number of years now. Maybe not as consistently as they would have liked, and maybe not in as an extravagant a manner as the Saudis have because they're still trying to bring in more players now. They're really going all in for this. I think that what Saudi Arabia is doing is not to be compared with the other leagues, especially not the MLS, which for a very long time seemed to be a league that was out of touch with the sport itself due to its lack of a European format. I'm just going to call it that. Because there's no relegation and no promotion. So there's barely much competition. And they have this playoff system that takes place within the top six teams by the end of each season to determine the uh, Major League Soccer champion. Which to this, to this day I find quite odd. They didn't have these weird penalties as well. But I'm not going to get into that. I'm, I don't want to get off topic too much. My point here is that the Saudi Arabians who are working behind the scenes, again... I use that sentence for further emphasis, have probably studied every single project that has popped up across the board it's in order to further their understanding of the context within which they're trying to present their product. And I'll explain what that means. When you are trying to bring forth something new into the world of football, especially if it's in a continent that isn't as historically revered when it comes to the sport as Europe or South America. You tend to study what everyone else has done. You study what everyone else has done, be it in your vicinity or elsewhere. You start analyzing and figuring out where the points of weakness were, where the cracks were. You start trying to understand how people tried to uh, paper over those cracks, excuse me, that or through understanding that you figure out exactly what to do. Because it's just as important to learn what not to do in order to figure out what to actually do in situations that are important. You know, to make very, to make clear-cut decisions. To make the kind of decisions that matter. To make the kind of decisions where the future actually rides on the, on the cause and effect that goes beyond it. So, I think what I'm trying to say is, these people aren't just splashing money for the heck of it. I think they know exactly what the money is going to bring in in return. This is, an invest this is an investment. They're waiting for their ROIs. Their return on investment needs to be much higher. It needs to be better. It needs to provi provide more sponsors, better sponsorship deals, better players. And I don't know if I covered this earlier, but I think a very interesting example of them bringing in players that aren't necessarily finished with their careers, but could elevate the game in a sense. Ruben Neves. I spoke about how they had made a bid, 
Saudi league, uh, Al Hilal side, Al Hilal SFC have made a bid of 55 million worth uh, for Ruben Neves of Wolverhampton Wonders, and yet his market value is at 40. And that just makes me wonder. You know, they pulled up and decided to pay higher than the player was worth. He signed the contract, and he's going to be playing in Asia for the next five years or so at the age of 26. What does that tell you? It can say a lot about the player, but if you bring in enough players of that mold into your league, you're going to raise some eyebrows. People are going to realize that the... What's the word I'm looking for? The level, the standards that your league adheres to rises and rises and rises pretty quickly. The level continues to rise. The standards continue to rise. Everything is going to start moving up the ladder in a sense. Everything that the SPL was worth is going to escalate. Everything the SPL could possibly be worth is going to provide more space for opportunity. So it makes me wonder whether or not they know exactly what they're doing in certain aspects, but they don't seem foolish to me. They're trying to invest on all fronts. And from the outsider's perspective looking in, it seems as though they're doing the right job. Also, in case you haven't heard, apparently they the uh, Saudi Public Investment Fund is an investor in Chelsea's majority shareholder, Clear Lake Capital. And they're trying to help Chelsea offload multiple players who they no longer need, but would, ha would add more dimension to the Saudi Premier League. It's pretty smart. And just to give you a percentage, apparently they're present at a 5% rate when it comes to the share shares they have in Clear Lake. So they don't have necessarily a uh, big stake in the company. But 5% is not a small number. Those zeros don't lie. Okay? And I think it would be fair enough to assume that they're not being as complacent and uh, as complacent as people would assume them to be. For this one Asian league to be present across Every single news platform related to the sport that we have seen throughout the past two weeks and still maintain a presence in such a consistent manner managed to conjure up a pull factor to have pull, to bring in these players, to allow people to just feel curious enough to want to pay attention to what's going on in Asia. This is good. It's good for the continent overall. And it raises the question, will this pay off or not? Please let me know what you think in the comment section below. This has been another late upload in a long line of late uploads. But I thought I had to share what I thought about the whole thing. I just used the word twice, excuse me. The exhaustion, I'm tired. Uh, please like this video if you've enjoyed my content. Leave a comment in the uh, comment section below. Let me know if you agree with anything I've said. Let me know if you actually think the Saudis could build something that no other league outside of Europe has been able to build in a long time. I'd like to know what you think about that. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't been subscribed already, uh, mainly because I've realized that a lot of our viewers, 97% to be exact, are not subscribed. So please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I would genuinely appreciate it. Put that bell notification on as well because I upload content daily. And I will see you next time the whistle blows. Cheers, everyone. Thank you for watching.